Hey, Dad, why don't we keep the Passover? Um, because we are Christian, not Jews. We follow the New Testament, not the Old Testament. Yes, but Jesus didn't come to destroy any Old Testament laws. Look, he said, do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have not come to abolish them, but to fulfill them. For truly I tell you, until heaven and earth disappear, not the smallest letter, not the least stroke of a pen, will by any means disappear from the law until everything is accomplished. Hmm, so you're saying we have to keep all the Old Testament laws? Not me. Jesus said not even the smallest letter of the Old Testament law will disappear. Okay, let's look at some Old Testament laws. And you tell me whether you think Christians are meant to keep them. Sure, Dad. First, um, there's not only the Passover feast. What about Pentecost and the Feast of Tabernacles? Are we supposed to keep these too? I'm not sure, are we? Here's another Old Testament law. If a man dies without kids, his brother has to marry the man's wife and have kids for him. Oh, that's weird. That means your dad's your uncle? Yep, weird. Another Old Testament law. People who commit adultery have to be stoned to death. Whoa, sounds like Islam. Now a more personal Old Testament law. When a woman has a period, she's unclean, and everyone who touches anything she touches is also unclean. Oh, Dad, TMI. Agreed. Next one. No work on the Sabbath. Nothing. Okay. And last example, you have to sacrifice animals for your sin. Oh, I know this one. Jesus is our sacrifice now, so we don't have to sacrifice animals. Um, but you just read that not the smallest letter would disappear from the law, and now you're saying the Old Testament sacrificial laws are gone? Oh, does this mean the Bible has contradictions? <laughs> no, the Bible has no contradictions. Let's read those verses again to understand. What did Jesus come to do? Um, he said to fulfill the law. Does it say the law would never change? It says it will never change until everything is accomplished. Oh, I get it. Yes. It's like when you say I'm never allowed to touch my phone until my schoolwork is done. It doesn't mean I can't ever touch my phone. Rather, it means not until my schoolwork is done. Yes, Romans 10.4 says that Christ fulfilled the law. That's why he said it is finished when he was on the cross. Jesus met the requirements of the law, so we don't have to. Um, does that mean that Christians have no laws to follow? Because that would be chaos. No, Jesus gave a new law for Christians. Remember, Jesus said a new commandment. Yes, I remember. A new command I give you. Love one another. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. So love fulfills the Old Testament law? Yes. Look at this verse. Let no debt remain outstanding, except the continuing debt to love one another. For whoever loves others has fulfilled the law. Wow. It says love fulfills the law. Jesus said he came to fulfill the law. Yes. Let's read the next verses. The commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not covet, and whatever other commands there may be are summed up in this one command. Love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no harm to a neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfillment of the law. Wow, that makes sense. Love means you won't steal, kill. Love means you won't hurt others. Love fulfills the law. Exactly. The Bible says Jesus met the righteous requirements of the law so we can be free to live by the Spirit. Oh, the Spirit. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. 
Against such things there is no law. Wow, it says against such things there is no law. You've got it. When we live by the Spirit's love, we automatically keep God's law. So we don't have to worry about the hundreds of Old Testament laws. And that's a relief. Yes, you can say that again.